Okay, class, so let's look at how what happens to blood glucose regulation after a meal. So in this kind of, in this pathway, um, how this works, um, I have recorded, I have um, used many methods to explain this. So you want to make sure you look at multiple methods. So first is this chart, flow chart method with numbers and steps and color coding like we talked about. And then this is explained through words. So make sure you go through each step and look at how the words match up. And I also have them drawn them out using a visual method. Okay, and I'll redraw them with you um, using um, this video again. And also I have a little animation, interactive animation when you click through and you can see what happened with the cells. Okay, so there's multiple methods to understand this. So when it gets difficult, don't get stressed out. You want to try different methods. Maybe you go back to look at this very carefully one step at a time, journaling it, and then drawing out pictures to go with it, and then playing that animation um, game. Okay, so let's take a look at blood glucose homeostasis, the response to high blood glucose after eating. Okay, so this is after any um, eating significant amount of food, so for example, after breakfast, but if you just if you had a snack at 10 o'clock, this will also go on. Okay, so let's take a look at back in the big picture again. So remember, um, we had talked about this before. So what happens is that say you were sleeping and you were actually in the normal homeostasis range, and when you eat breakfast at step one. What happens is that at step two, that's going to increase your blood glucose. It depends what meal you ate. Um, if you just had some fruit and yogurt, you might not re raise it as much as, say, if you had a donut and a mocha frappuccino. Okay, so your body has to respond using the hormone to respond. Okay, so this is the hormone response at step three, which then should then return your blood glucose back to normal. Okay, once it's normal, the, ins ins uh, the control system should shut off at step five, and now you're in normal range for a while until you eat again. Okay, so let's take a look at what is going on this in this one, two, three, four, and five. Okay, so that's what we're looking at in this graph. Okay, so again, you can see the step-by-step -step, uh, explanation here, but also uh, we will draw it out. Okay, I kind of, I like combining this with the drawing. Okay, so let's go to step, step one. So you eat breakfast, okay, when you eat breakfast, the food gets digested and broken down, and the glucose in the meal is absorbed through the intestine into your blood. So when that happens, after you eat in step one, step two, the blood glucose now is higher. When the blood glucose is now greater than the normal range, it's going to turn on the beta cells but, and make insulin, the hormone. But it's also because of high blood glucose, you don't need those alpha cells. So you can turn off the alpha cells and decrease glucagon. Because you have high blood glucose, you do not need this half of the equation. Well, insulin has a number of actions. And what insulin does is think about insulation, to put it away, to insulate it, to store. So from the meal, you need to store it. And to store it, there's three different places for you to store that glucose. One is in the liver, one's in the muscle, and one's in fat. Okay, so those are the three places you're going to store glucose with insulin around. So in the liver, you're going to store it in the form of glycogen. That is the form of storage glucose. And then in the muscle, same thing. You're going to take up as the glucose and then you're going to store it as glycogen as well. So imagine the meal coming in and you ate this meal. So now with insulin around, you're going to pour it away. So where it goes depends on what storage space is available and how empty those storage spaces are. So for example, if you, before you ate breakfast, you went for a morning run, those muscles are going to be very empty, relatively empty. So when you eat that breakfast, a lot of that glucose is going to be going into the muscle 
to replace what you burned. Same thing with the liver. If you ate a large dinner, well, then the breakfast there there's not that much, and you didn't exercise, and there's not much as much space in the liver or muscle for that storage. Anything extra that it, that storage cannot take, or there's not enough time for the storage to take in the liver or muscle, will be converted to fat, and that will be stored in fat. Okay. So usually things that are really, really high in sugar, your body doesn't have the time um, to, and there's not enough room to pack it away in the liver and muscles. So a lot of times that excess sugar, especially high fructose corn syrup, is going to be converted to fat and the fat is going to be stored in adipose tissue, in fat tissue. Fat storage is the only storage that's unlimited. So people can keep gaining weight, but muscle, just by eating, you're not going to just keep on gaining muscle. You have to work to gain that muscle. So as you gain more muscle, you will have more storage, but that takes work for that to happen. Anyway, so the three places are where glucose is being stored. Once glucose is put away and now you're back to homeostasis range, so now you decrease blood glucose to homeostasis range, then you have to turn off. So negative feedback has to go back and turn off the beta cells because you do not want to store anymore. You already have the perfect amount of glucose in the blood. So you're going to turn that off and that's going to be turned off. The beta cells are going to be turned off until you eat again. Okay. So here is the explanation in words. Okay. Of what I just explained with a little extra. But here is the explanation in the drawing. I'm going to draw it again with you step by step um, so that you can follow along better and I can go through the steps again. Okay, so this is what we're going to be doing in this uh, slide. So let's go back to again what is insulin? What is the insulin's role? So if you think about insulin, right? I told you about storage. Well, that the insulin is made by beta cell, which can sense the imbalance in the body. So once the body senses the imbalance when the high, with high glucose, the insulin is sent out. Insulin is like the, the key to open up your storage locker. So when you have a high amount of blood glucose, then the insulin opens up the key, takes the key, like here in little I is a key, goes to all these little storage units and open them up so you can put them in storage. Okay, so think of an insulin as the key to open up the storage unit. Okay, so you have to have the key to store, to store in your um, uh, storage. Okay, so let's take a look at drawing it up. Okay, so I'm going to draw uh, first um, the, the cells on how they take it up. So here's blood vessel. So after you eat food, okay, what that food is going to send into the body is a little glucose molecule. So I'm going to just write G in green here. I think the picture there is purple, but it's okay. I'm going to write G. Well, the, the high blood glucose, let's just say that this three is high blood glucose, will send a message to the pancreas. And the pancreas has the beta cells. So those beta cells, okay, that beta cell is going to make insulin, okay? And insulin is going to start flowing into the blood. So we're going to put insulin in the blood. So now you have high glucose and insulin, the little keys. So those little keys are then going to go to the cells that respond to insulin, which in this case, we're going to draw a big cell. And this is our liver and muscles. So let's start with that first, liver and muscle. So on the liver and muscle cells, we have insulin receptor. Okay, so the insulin is going to bind to this insulin receptor, so lock and key. So the lock and key is going to open up your storage units, little glucose transporter. So this little lines are what's called glucose transporter or um, 
glucose kind of channels, glucose、um, doorways. Okay, so what that's going to do is once that's open, the glucose from the blood is going to come in to the cell. So now I have glucose inside my cells. Okay, so this could be liver or muscle. Again, where it goes depends on how much storage is available and how many storage units you have. So the bigger the muscle, the more storage units you have. The more you use it, the more the storage locker is empty. Okay, so then you can store more and take. So the nice thing about say muscle being used and having big storage is that. You can take what is in the blood, all of the blood, and put it into your storage, so that then you have energy to be used all day. So the glucose、um, is converted to glycogen to store for later use. So now you have nice stored glycogen, glucose stored as glycogen in the muscle and the liver to be used throughout the day until your next meal. So remember, glucose is a single sugar. Glycogen is a chain of sugar, and I explain it here. So、you chain the little glucose into a glycogen, so you store it as a nice long chain、um, in the、uh, liver and the muscle. Okay, so that's what happens in the liver and muscle. All right, so let's see what happens if this is a facet. On erases. So the same thing, right? It's all the same situation here in the beginning. We said、uh, we have ate the meal and we have.、Um, Blood is high in glucose, and blood is high in insulin coming from the pancreas. Okay, so we already so depending on the again the size and the available storage, the liver and the muscle are working on taking up glucose. Okay, so depending on your meal and how much glucose there is and how much storage there is, the fat cells also come into play. So fat cells. Also have insulin receptor, and then the key can come to the fat cells, unlock the storage locker. So this is the fat storage locker, and it's going to take the glucose. So this is the, the same as before from the blood into the fat cells, and then the difference is it's going to take that glucose. Okay. And that glucose, the, especially if there's extra or you ate something really high in sugar, then the fat cell has to come into play and take that glucose and convert it to fat for storage. Okay, so the difference between fat and muscle is that you know as you work on you have more muscle, you you do have more storage lockers, but fat cells doesn't need to be worked to store. So fat cells look like this. Right, you have a nucleus, and you have the cell membrane, and this inside here is what you you will store fat droplets. Okay, so as you eat more food with glucose or fructose, and this causes in fat, but we're focusing on glucose. So let's think about like we eat a lot of high sugar foods. Then the fat gets stored more and more. So what happens is the cell doesn't grow in number. What happens is actually the cell gets bigger. So you can see it's the same cell, but now the fat droplet has gotten a lot bigger. Okay, storing more fat. So this will be weight gain. The fat cells got bigger, and you have lots of the cells. So it's just lots of the cells got bigger. And the weight loss will be taking those fat droplets off for ATP, and then the cells then shrink back down、um, to smaller size. So that would be weight loss. So you can shift to weight gain and weight loss depending on what you put in and what you take out. So again, remember that you can look at the summary here. It's a product, but I drew it step step by step for you. Depending on what you ate, the food, how much blood glucose increases, and how much space you have in the liver and the muscle cells、uh, or the fat cells, glucose gets moved in and put away. Okay, 
There's a nice little animation here. When you go into this website, click on hyperglycemia, high blood glucose state, and then you can then see what happens with insulin going to liver cells, what happens. When you click on the liver cell, it'll show you animation, what happens with the presence of the insulin, and same with the muscle and then the fat, okay? So you can review that for the hyperglycemia. Practice it and then really think about yourself. When you eat a meal, when you eat a meal, I, and if your goal is to uh, maintain weight, you really want to eat down a meal that is um, balanced and not lower glycemic index, whole grain food, whole food, so that then you're replacing the energy for you to use in the liver and in your muscle, but not very much goes into the fat. So this is how you maintain weight, okay, uh, is watching if you're eating within your whole meal stasis. Okay, remember excess that you eat then will go into storage in the fat because the body has to bring down the glucose to normal in order for um, you to be in that blood glucose homeostasis. Okay.